Swamiji has always been a master of basic fundamental reality. Who are we? Where are we? What, you know, what's going on? What, uh, how do I know uh, that when I walk in that door and walk out the other door that the world that was over up the driveway was going to be there next time? And at this moment in time, how and why does that matter? As you recognize that you're, you're not a separate individual, you're, you're just a part of the whole. And all action comes from, from that. Reality is, is a whole. Hmm. It, it's everything. It's everywhere. That means it's not separate from us. You know, God isn't uh, some guy up there in the sky looking down, pulling strings and controlling everything. God is that feeling of completeness and wholeness that wells up from within us. And if you recognize the nature of your being from that level, then the whole question of ownership, doership, non-doership and stuff becomes irrelevant. Someone would always still raise their hand and say, I'm deeply confused. <laughs> I'm troubled, more troubled now than when I came in the door to sit with you, Swamiji. And uh, then he would say, tell me, what do you think is real? No, no I, I, I want you to share. Now, everyone, what is real? What is reality? And we would sit quietly. And quite often there was nothing in my head. Now I know from life experience that that nothing was beautiful. That thoughtlessness, that pure awareness was what we came for. Crazy, I know, but there it was. Nothing at all. Peace. Silence. But someone would say, Swamiji, I've been thinking about your question Ah, I'm still thinking about it. What is real? Can you share something with us? And because, as Swamiji would say, he say, you know, emotionally, I'm a very mushy person. <laughs> <laughs> so I will, I will share with you now what I, what I know. There was quiet. What is real is what is lasting, eternal. What is changeless. I would like you to be focused and recognize your state of consciousness now and compare it after two minutes when your owning will be completed. If you could recognize noticeable difference in the sweetness, in the clarity, in the profundity of your consciousness, then automatically you will be drawn to do this Om. How do we dance around to know each other better? And when in that very process we are inspired to know, who is this me? And then the mysterious journey starts. Louder and louder. Ah. 
see what happens then and there when you come forward to share your conviction. Don't worry about the nature of your conviction. It is enough that you have recognized it is your conviction. Have that much. Um. So, be two minutes yourself, allow yourself to be yourself. That it means if your mind is brooding, let it brood a little bit. Don't bring it over to concentrate and meditate and all that. No, no, no. Allow yourself to do. Hang out. After a couple of minutes, your mind will say, okay, I had enough of hanging out now. Please, hold this. So then you deal with it in a very light-hearted way. But somehow come to this conviction, what it is that you want to experience in that heavenly state and what it is that you have to do to reach that heavenly state. I am quiet for five minutes, take it easy and then share your heart. Times a day and really feel that and I feel like a vibration, like a sensation across my whole body and I just feel love for everything all at once. And then somebody will say something to me, like it's nasty or something, and, and then it'll be gone. I'm like, oh. how did I let them take that from me and not be able to continue in that, in that loving? For me, I would say, is the ultimate forgetting of, forgetting of what the natural state of the self, whoever that is, is that forgetting. <laughs> and thinking that I'm all these emotions and things that are happening every day. Had a little time off from, had a little more time with myself to read, and during that time I've been doing some soul searching, and I had a kind of an awakening just a couple days ago through a whole other story I won't get into, but I realized that. I can be blind to what is right around me. I sometimes don't see the obvious. Um, so I was thinking about that as we were sitting here, and it's come across, as I've realized, it's, it's started to open up more and more, which in a way with ignorance, it, you don't see what's really around you and the beauty you have with you that's already there that you can need, need to tap into. Um, but then I was watching that child over there, as she or he is touching everything, mouthing everything, smelling everything, looking at everything, exploring everything in its world to find truth, to find answer, to find knowledge. So I don't know where I'm leading with this, except I think we have a whole lot of that right around us. And you don't have to go far to find it if you just allow it to happen. And knowledge is light, which seems pretty simplistic. And I think throughout my life, my own truth, that I've, I've been able to see glimpses of the light and of the truth. Um, recently, I've been able to see it more. But you ask the question, how far away are we as ourselves to, to that light and how long is that path? And for me, it's, it's extremely long. But I draw comfort in the fact that I, from time to time I can still see the light and make some type of observation. From it. The darkness is still there. Um, the ignorance is still there. But the fact that I see more through looking inside myself, the fact that I can see that light more often than I used to be able to, is very comforting for me. When you were saying that about the ignorance, it's, um, for me, made me have the realization of being aware versus being unaware. Um, the ignorance of being unaware and awareness, being aware of what's unfolding before you because being in that state of awareness of what's unfolding give you the ability to 
look, say if someone does say something to you in a negative way, then you're not reactive to it because you are aware of that this is a divine being, you're a divine being, and you're aware of maybe, okay, wh why did this unfold this way? So you begin to be aware of how you looking at things differently, having a different perspective about it versus um, letting ego come in and say, well, why would they say this thing to me and being offended by it versus looking at it and saying, hmm, what can I learn from this? Or knowing that, that maybe that's something, that you, agreement that you and that person had to come together at that particular time in that particular place. And it was maybe a lesson for them or for you. So it goes from the awareness of what that experience is in that moment so you don't begin to place any judgment on it. For those somehow who got exposed to that divine radiance, divine grace, divine whatever you call it. And once you are exposed, it is a different kind of exposure. It is not your mundane exposure that you fall in love with this thing or that thing, this person or that person or this car or that car, it is something that saturates your entire being. So then life automatically changes. It is not that uh, you do some the other exercise to transform your life. It is like when you wake up from the dream. Something totally changes. You do nothing to change and yet something totally changes because you are no more dreaming. The dream context is over. So, in a mystical sense, this ignorance means some deep, deep dumb belief, some deep, deep dumb belief <coughs> is indicative of ignorance. And what is a deep dumb belief that we all share unless God somehow exposes us to divine grace? Or Somehow we end up realizing our divinity or our self, whatever you may want to call it. It is not that easy. Who is stopping the movement of the hand? Where does that entity live? Who starts the movement of the hand and who stops the movement of the hand? Ego, me. Where is this me, ego? Is it permanent or it comes and goes? Who feels all the feelings, the most horrible and the most divine? It is this ego or some other entity? And what is wrong in having all the experiences from A to Z? If God is everywhere, what